Doug in Las Vegas for the 2017 Adult Leadership Conference. What a phenomenal last few days we have had of education, motivation, inspiration, and every other great adjective you could use to describe the time we are having with adult leaders from across the country. And I'm joined again here with Young Marine Sergeant Major Bacon, our National Young Marine of the Year. And in this edition of the News Network, we're going to start with our annual reunion of honor trip to Guam and Iwo Jima. And I think the best person to talk about it, Young Marine Sergeant Major Bacon. Thank you, sir. I was excited to meet the 6th Division Yamoys at Los Angeles at the beginning of the trip. They were all extremely motivated and ready for the trip. And let me tell you, we had a great time. We met our veterans at Los Angeles and they were all upbeat and I, they couldn't wait to get to Guam. The whole trip is based around them and we love helping them out. They are walking history and you learn so much from them. So many life traits and they're extremely honorable and proud men. The honor that is bestowed upon us to be able to meet and talk to these veterans and then later travel to the island with them is unimaginable. We're all so excited to meet all of them and they're excited to meet us as we get to help them around the island and help them back onto the place where they fought so many years ago. And you know the ceremony there is, is amazing. You know the, this reunion of honor ceremony where you have representatives of the Japanese government, the families of those that, that fought on that island, and then the Americans that come there as well. And we get together and just the spirit of we won't let this happen again and honoring each other's service and just this whole reunion of honor concept was amazing to watch. And then the young Marines get to play that special part in the ceremony. Uh, yes, sir. And actually a funny story leading up to that. We were on the top of Mount Saribaji when we realized we started to run out of time. Yeah. So, and uh, we had thought we were going to get a shuttle down. Um, that plan was crushed. So we uh, adapted and overcome. And I took a group of young Marines and we sprinted down Mount Saribaji across the island and to the ceremony. We were able to lay the wreaths down and get there on time. And, and, and sprint rhymes with shin splints because that's what I was feeling by the time we got to the bottom of the hill. But you made the ceremony on time, you delivered those wreaths. Young Marines did such a phenomenal job. It, it was amazing. The, the, the quotes from the Marines that were there watching the ceremony, the crispness, the professionalism, just shine through the whole way. And then before you know it, we had gathered up some sand from the beaches and we went back to the airport and, and it seemed like in no time at all, our trip was over and we were back on the planes heading back to Guam. Yes, sir, it's, it's such a fast and amazing experience that it just it goes that fast, sir. Right. Uh, but as you said earlier, the ceremony was really striking and it struck me more last year because I didn't know what to expect from That's it. That's right, because last year but, was your first time and this year you really got to sit back and experience a more similar to me. Uh, that was my feeling. Last year it was all new. We were, oh man, we got to do this, we got to do that. And this year you could really take it in more, I thought. It's, it's really interesting to see how much we've changed over time. I mean, you go to these veterans who hated the other guy and hated the other country. Right. And now we're at this point in time where we stand facing each other, saluting and bowing to each other as we listen to speakers that are speaking in Japanese and we don't fully understand them but the passion is evident. Right. And then same with the American speakers. The Japanese can't understand them, but. But we've gotten to this point where we settle those issues and work together for a common good going forward. What a great lesson to be learned for all of us. Absolutely. So back in early April, we had an opportunity to travel to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina for the Marine South Exposition. Marine South is one of three expositions that Emerald Expo holds in conjunction with the Marine Corps League to bring Marines and vendors together to talk about the future of the Marine Corps' products and services. But the great part about that is Emerald Expos provides an area in the tent for the young Marines to set up and operate. And we get an opportunity to interact with so many of the vendors that support our program, alumni and families and parents. And we've got some great footage from on site that reflects all those things that happened there in early April in Camp Lejeune. You know, Edgar, here at the Marine South at Camp Lejeune, it has been amazing to see how many young Marine alumni have come by to see you and talk about their success stories. That's got to feel great as the head of the Alumni Association. It's great because we, uh, there are so many former young Marines that are out there. And it just so happens that some of them do decide to go into the Marine Corps 
and sometimes along the way they make their way here to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Uh, I think we've ran into about I mean, 15 uh, alumni that are, that are stationed here. Uh, we've had some young Marines who live in the surrounding areas. They've come by and stopped by to say hello. Uh, it's just been outstanding. And it, the great part about it, all of this is that reaching out to them and seeing who they're still in touch with is a great opportunity for us to get in touch with more young Marines. Uh, just today, we met somebody who was in the Young Marines from the early 1990s. Right. And he said even today uh, that he still is in touch with about eight or ten of them. Uh, so it's outstanding that former Young Marines are still uh, in touch with one another. And that's amazing. I, I think we let's show some of the footage of the people you met while you were here. That's a great idea. Edgar Huff here with Captain Durling here at uh, 2 Meth, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. So tell us, Captain, uh, how has the Young Marines helped you get to where you are today? Well, just a little bit of background on myself. In the second and in the seventh grade, um, I, did, I, I failed. The fact of the matter is I failed, and I was on my way to becoming one of those statistics. But during that time, my brother joined the Marine Corps, and I learned what a Marine was. And when he was on recruiter's assistance, he met a young Marine. All of a sudden, I went from just a downward spiral to having a goal in life. I was going to become a Marine. And the young Marine gave me that focus and that drive and that can-do attitude that helped propel me in this direction. So I didn't become that statistic, but I was able to become somebody that was useful in society. All right, Edgar Huff here at Marine Expo South here at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. And right now I'm here with Chief Warrant Officer Kirby. Uh, tell us, Chief Warrant Officer, um, tell us about your time as a young Marine. Well, Young Marines, uh, tell you, is why I'm here today. Uh, I started just so I could be part of my, uh, with my cousins. My cousins was Young Marines. I'm like, hey, I want to be with my cousins. And it gave me a way to kind of get away from the street life, born and uh, raised in Los Angeles, California. So instead of hanging out on the streets, I went to go be a, with the Young Marines. I learned discipline at a young age, and it just gave me all the principles that I live my life by now. And it's helped me advance in the Marine Corps. Um, I picked up sergeant in two years in the Marine Corps based off of the things I learned as a young Marine. So it, it really helped me advance and just give me that passion and that love for what I do today. That's awesome. Well, we appreciate you stopping by today. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And here we are at Marine South with Raytheon Weapons Systems. Raytheon's been a big supporter of the Young Marines Golf Tournament every year for several years. Ed Dunlap and his team, we just want to thank you for everything you've done for the Young Marines program. Oh, it's our pleasure. It's, it's, a, it's a great organization and we love supporting it. It's good for America, it's good for uh, the country, so we're in. One of our largest supporters in the Young Marines program has been Glock. And as you know, for years, Glock's been an avid supporter of ours for our Leadership Academy and other events around the country. And I'm really excited to be here with retired Sergeant Major, Marine Corps, Mike McAvoy with the Glock Corporation. Mike, just thanks for everything you do and for supporting us all across the country. We can't do it without help from folks like you. Well, thanks for what you do for the young Marines, getting them ready for the, for the future, and we really appreciate it. Outstanding. Next Generation Leaders, supported by Glock, and everyone across the Young Marine News Network. You know, one of the great parts about being here at Marine South is sponsored by the Marine Corps League, and we're really fortunate to have the commandant of the Marine Corps League, Mr. Richard Gore, stopping by the booth here with us. Richard, thanks so much for everything the League does for us across the country and all your support that you've been giving us during your tour. Colonel, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. You've become a good friend of mine as a, have the Young Marines, and all I want to say is we're proud to have the young Marines on board of the Marine Corps League. Well, thank you've been, you, sir. You've been a, a, a shining star in our our sphere of influence, and when we have these expositions, you're always here and you make us feel proud. Thank you very Semper much, sir. I appreciate thank it. You. Semper Fi. Hoorah. For years now, Emerald Expos has supported the young Marines at the various Marine Expos around the country, at Marine West, Modern Day Marine in Quantico, and here at Camp Lejeune at the Marine South Expo. And I'm here with Charlie Baisley at Emerald Expos, who has been a great supporter of ours for years. And I just want to thank you for all you've done for our program for these many years. Oh, absolutely. Um, this is actually, we heard this morning, the 25th anniversary of Marine South. We like to call it the Users Expo, where we're trying to get the great products and services to the Marines at the unit level. And we're thrilled when you know, great organizations like the Young Marines come. 
um, and in particular the young Marines, because you bring a, a great big crew with you. And like I said a moment ago, we have some celebrity sightings like Arlie Ermey and Sergeant Major Overstreet and all those great young Marine advocates that are out there. So thanks you to you, Bill, for showing up, and, and we can't wait till uh, Modern Day Marine this fall. Thanks very much. A great opportunity to thank some of our supporters and interact with the Marine Corps League that supports us across the country. Signing off for the Young Marine News Network. You know, we just can't do it without the supporters in the Marine Corps League and those people that donate to our program to help us continue to provide quality youth programs for all of you young Marines across the country. And we thank all of them for the continued opportunities to go to these events. And the next big one, it really is the big one, the Big Ten itself up at Quantico, the Modern Day Marine Expo in September. Moving on into May, here we are, back in Las Vegas one more time for the Adult Leadership Conference. And I'm here again with Sergeant Major Bacon, and I think a lot of this has been great classes, great motivation, some guest speakers from different areas. Uh, the DEA has been out here. We gave the Kiki Camarina Awards that went out on Thursday. Uh, we provided some awards to adult leaders for their support to our program this year. All along while the adults are doing all their activities, the Young Marines are doing their own activities in preparation for the grueling National Young Marine of the Year Board and then Mr. Lusignan's Drug Demand Reduction Panel. But we try to let them out at night to have a lot of fun while they're here to kind of take that stress off. And I think you'd agree that everything is awesome. Absolutely, sir. And I have a video to sum all of that up. So what else were you up to? So one of the first things we did was we went uh, zip lining, which was a lot of fun. Flying down Fremont Street at 35 miles an hour, watching all the people below you. What a great experience, and all the young Marines loved it. That's right, and we did it Superman style, flying this way, not city down. And we had a couple of special guests. We even got the chairman of the board, Mr. Bill Smith, along for the ride, as well as Sergeant Major Overstreet. And you know he was all about it. It may not be bronc busting or calf roping, but I think it was pretty exciting anyhow. We also went go-karting, which was a lot of fun, a little bit aggressive. I know Mrs. Borka, she's a really good driver and she was probably one of the best out there. She passed me one time, so. There's a saying, if it ain't rubbing, it ain't racing. After that, yesterday we went to an indoor amusement park, which I didn't even know they existed until now. Somehow Vegas has all these weird things that I didn't know you could put two roller coasters inside, so. Outstanding. It's, um, we had a great time. So as we said, Thursday was the opening ceremonies. We had a great overview of the program. We had a good talk by the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps to all the attendees, as well as our drug demand reduction panel and discussions in the afternoon. Friday was classes, classes, classes all day long. But this morning, we had a special guest speaker attend. One of the highlights at this year's Adult Leaders Conference was a special guest speaker we had this morning, Dr. Gene Twangy from San Diego State University and the author of Generation Me gave us a fascinating discussion and in her insights on millennial generations, I generations, and working with all of us to make our program better. Doc, it's such an honor to have you here. Thank you so much for coming out and speaking with all of us. Thank you. I, I wanted to ask you, just from your perspective, of, of over a million surveys of youth across America and growing, what are some tips for our young Marines as we go forward, as they try to be successful leaders of the future? Mm -hmm. So I think one of the key things that's really important to understand is you grew up um, in this culture in the last 20 or 30 years. You probably got the idea from somewhere. You probably heard things like you can be anything you want to be or believe in yourself and anything is possible. So the importance of self-esteem and self-confidence. Um, there's some folks who, who have the idea even that that's all that you need to succeed is right. just to be self-confident. Um, but it turns out we know from lots of research that that's not really true, that you need to uh, instead focus more on working hard and putting the effort in. No. <laughs> So young Marines, <laughs> when we're making you earn something, it's really good for you. <laughs> so, but that's true, that, that's it fascinating. It's good to see, you know, the data really proves out that the, the things we do in our program by making you earn things through structured 
uh, challenges and exercises really is good for development going forward. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I believe you use the term resiliency, mm -hmm. and it builds the resiliency. And, and, and does this help them as they go through life into college and into the workforce then? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, I mean, I think this is a, a real problem these days is you have kids who maybe they got a trophy just for participating or mm -hmm. they never really heard criticism or their parents protected them from failure. If they didn't have uh, one of these programs where they got true feedback that they end up in the college classroom or in their first job. Right. Um, and you're not going to get a trophy just for showing up in college <laughs> and you're not going to get that for your first job. You have to really put in that effort and really earn it. So, so your freshman students, you don't give a participation award for them at college? I do not. Darn it. So that's not happening. Um, and then the other question we have, we, we hear a lot of discussion about communications. Oh, I can't talk to those people. And, and, and it's funny because it comes from all times. Those older people don't listen to me and those kids don't listen to me. How about a little discussion about communication across the, uh, across the gym? generations. Yeah. Well, there's a number of things that come up. So one is how are you going to communicate? Mm -hmm. So for a lot of the older generation, the baby boomers, it's face to face. And you get a little bit younger, people in their 40s, it's email. And then the millennials maybe texting. And then for a lot of iGen, which is a lot of our young Marines, right. it's Snapchat and other things like that. So you have to realize, well, this, you know, this person I'm talking to, they may, they may not use the same method of communication. So that's one piece. The other piece is to just understand that this person has a different experience growing up. Um, so the older folks need to understand that about the younger folks, and the younger folks need to understand that about the older folks, that they didn't grow up with the same experiences. So for the younger folks, you understand that person you're talking to, they didn't have a smartphone when they were your age. They had a different experience. That is very true. Yeah. Di, that's, that's some great insights from you. And I have to, I have to shamelessly plug this. How, how I got a hold of the good doctor is one of the books that, that I had read last year that I found was fascinating. And so I'm going to do my best Vanna White, Generation Me, by her. This is a great book, and a lot of the information she talks about is in here and, and a lot more. But I understand mm -hmm. that you've expanded on your research, and now mm -hmm. you know many of the people in our program are probably millennials and boomers that are older. Mm -hmm. But our, our young Marines who are in that age of eight to high school graduation, mm -hmm. You're doing research on them, and you have a new book coming out. Yeah. Could you talk about that just a little bit? Sure. So that book is called iGen, because I think that yeah. will be the name of this post-millennial group. And the I is? So that it's a little I, like iPods and okay. iPhones. Perfect. Because uh, apparently three out of four teenagers, that's the smartphone they have. Three is, out of four. Is, yep. And oh. they grew up with iPhones and iPads. and. Um, that it's that, that experience of growing up with a smartphone, the first generation to have that. Um, so it'll be out August 22nd. Okay. And it's about the generation born 1995 to about 2012. So that's almost all of your wow, young, yeah, all our young Marines. Um, and it's really about how that technology has had an impact on how they spend their time. Right. And um, uh, other, other influences in terms of their experiences and how they've been quite different wow. from the millennials just before them. And, and I think one of the takeaways I found fascinating from your speech this morning was this discussion about interpersonal communication right. vice electronic communication. I, I think that's a good takeaway. If you can make a comment mm -hmm. on that, that would be wonderful. Yeah. So that's really one of the biggest shifts um, in the last 10 years or so is we moved from communication that was much more face-to-face -to, -face right. to having that smartphone and spending so much time communicating with other people through the smartphone. And we know from more and more research that that is not always a good picture for developing social skills mm -hmm. and for feeling good in terms of mental health. Wow. So spending a lot of time on that smartphone can often lead to a lot of anxiety and unhappiness and depression. So, and even a lot of young people I talk to are realizing this. To be happy, to lead a fulfilling life, the better thing is maybe spend a little bit of time, make those plans, but then put down that phone and spend time with your friends and family face to face. That's what makes people happy. Outstanding. That is great advice for you at home and when you're out in the young marine world out there. Doctor, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you coming out and your insights. Thank you. Young Marines is really honored and blessed with some great supporters of our program to include members of our board of directors and someone that's been with us for a long time and with still amazing passion for this program 
is Sergeant Major Gene Overstreet, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. And he is here with us at the ALC, like he is at so many other events. And I just, Sergeant Major, want to give you a few moments with your impressions and some of the things that you've been doing for our program in the background here these last few months with me. Well, thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it actually is a pleasure to be here with the adult leaders and see the professionalism that uh, we're trying to guide and lead them in the right direction. The speakers, the classes, and everything that we've had here. And I know that's the reason that they come here, because uh, they want to be more professional in their leadership ability. They want to see the new opportunities they have for their young Marines. They want to see the new tactics and uh, all the tools that they have to train young Marines to keep them engaged. And whether it be all the new uh, opportunities and techniques with drug demand reduction uh, and all the other things that we're teaching our kids to, for uh, strengthen the lives of America's youth. Well, uh, you and I know, Sergeant Major, if you don't work it out, it doesn't get better. Absolutely. Whether it's PT or your brain housing group. Absolutely. We're always looking for that. And not only for our adult leaders, we're looking for new opportunities for our kids as well. You know, as you and I have discussed, sir, we're looking at hosting a drill and ceremonies class down at MCRD San Diego next year. And this will give our young Marines an opportunity to associate with drill instructors, see how they conduct business, see how they provide that message to real Marines. And our young Marines has the opportunity to do the same thing for their young Marines as well. So we're always looking for those new opportunities, those new classes. Uh, and you know what they say, if you want a new idea, read a no book. So uh, we're reaching back and looking at some right. of those things that we've done to be successful and resurrecting those things. And I understand that's something you've done in the past. And you're right, it came back again from last fall's symposium. Young Marines asked about that. And I've got right. asked several times. And I was so thankful for you back in February when we went to the recruit depot and we saw Young Marine, well, former Young Marine Sergeant Major Lucas Ward yeah. graduating from boot camp back on February 3rd. The Sergeant Major, myself, and a couple other members uh, were there along to see that happen. Uh, and we had another Young Marine join us as well. Phenomenal event. Thank you for that invitation. Oh, and you're the welcome. special viewing stands that you get <laughs> as the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. Um, but that was also that opportunity for you to go work out the details of that. And we look forward to working with you and the Recruit Depot to bring that to fruition soon. Sure. I think uh, with the message that we're giving all our adult leaders and when they take it back to their young Marines, the young Marines are going to be excited about the opportunities they're having coming up in the near future with the Young Marine Program. Well, thank you very much again for your time, Sergeant Major, oh, you're welcome, and your Colonel. enthusiasm as always, yeah, sir. Thank you. Ura. My pleasure. And then, of course, tonight, probably the reason why a lot of people show up, tonight we're going to make the awards for Volunteer of the Year, Unit of the Year, and the National Young Marine of the Year. It really is a highlight, and this year we're really excited that we're going to Facebook Live this for the first time, so that I'm hoping everyone across the country is going to see that tonight before they're going to see it now on the Young Marine News Network. The unit of the year for 2017, East Valley Young Marines. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your Young Marine National Adult Volunteer of the Year for 2017. Marie Smith, 6th Division. Yeah. The moment you've been waiting for, your 2017 National Young Marine of the Year, Young Marine Sergeant Major. Orozco from 4th Young Marine Division. So at the closing of the Adult Leadership Conference, 
and the announcement of the new National Young Marine of the Year comes that transition period where we have to say goodbye to Young Marine Sergeant Major Bacon as he goes on to life and college in the future. And I got to say, it seems like just yesterday I was sitting here with Lucas and you were right behind us sipping on a coffee mug. Wow, what a year. I mean, how do you encapsulate it all? But I, just a few things of your impressions of your years and after as the National Young Marine of the Year? It's, it's a great experience, sir. I mean, constant travel, constant talking with the young Marines. And this year, it's as every year, the program is constantly improving. And that's evident throughout every unit and everything I've done. Uh, starting with the National Leadership Academy, I'll go right back to that real quick. Right. Um, that's one of the best ones I've ever seen uh, based on the past, and it's continuously getting better. The Hawaii trip, that was awesome for me. I got to see a few uh, units there. And then I also did a few unit visits across the country. Right. And all of the Marines were great. I was excited to see all of them, got to speak to them. And just overall, what a great experience. I, I got to say, I, I wore you out pretty hard in Hawaii. I didn't let you go swimming very much. I, I made you film News Network all day one day in the hot sun. Uh, we climbed Window Rock, not, not just to the base of Window Rock, but all the way to the top for News Network footage. Um, just a lot of challenges. But I, I think that your message uh, that you brought to the field, to the young Marines, everywhere that I saw you speak or later on saw you speak about being proud of being a young Marine, being a young Marine 24-7, I, I really have to thank you for bringing that message home this year with the young Marines. And what an incredible difference that you have made to our program. And I thank you for your service to this program all the best of luck in the future, and you know we're going to be tracking you. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. It really is an important message, and I hope all of you young Marines out there understand being a young Marine 24-7 is very important to this program. You are the best. You are five steps ahead of everybody that's your same age, and you are on the right track to leading a healthy, drug-free lifestyle, and I hope you all know that. Continue putting effort into this program, and it will give you back everything you put into it. I hope you all stay motivated and ura. And so that wraps up this edition of the Young Marine News Network. And I give the honor of the closeout to you. Young Marines, stay motivated, stay engaged, keep living a healthy, drug-free lifestyle.